evening. As we gather together this evening, uh, as one community in the body of Christ, we give thanks uh, for the celebration that awaits us, but perhaps even more importantly, we give thanks that we are actually together, that being uh, amongst one another is a blessing uh, that we are greatly thankful for. You will notice in your bulletin uh, page numbers, that is for the red ELW that I hope you all got a chance to pick up, uh, follow along with us. Uh, even though we may be few, there is a huge audience, I am going to say a huge audience, watching us at home. Yes, it, with the exception of EG up here, you're not on tape. It's just up here at the front. His head will probably be on tape, so just so you're aware. And with that in mind, I also want to uh, give a welcome, uh, a welcome to um, a couple of new folks within our midst, uh, Pastor Milne uh, or Milne. It is Milne, correct? Milne, okay. I'm going to say it wrong a dozen times. I'm sure you'll hear that. Uh, but welcome, Christ uh, Merch Lutheran Church in Dryville, and we'll be bringing the message to us. Uh, if you don't know him yet, he's been here longer than I have, uh, Pastor Mike Combs. But we also send out um, a, a prayer for uh, the other new pastors in our midst. Uh, Reverend Scott Lingenfelter uh, is at Trinity, and um, Pastor Shoemaker is at, at Long Swamp United Church of Christ, and they could not be with us here this evening. I do not know um, yet, have not met the new pastor at Christ DeLong UCC, and uh, at St. Peter's UCC, or the new pastor that is at Hope Bowers. So please, if you know those folks, um, we want to keep them all in prayer. Finally, our offering for tonight will go to the Brandywine Food Pantry. There is a basket in the back of the sanctuary. I put these inserts in only because I just got this information, and uh, Kutztown Manor is certainly a location that we're all familiar with, so I encourage you um, to consider uh, perhaps uh, joining us in this um, particular uh, project that we uh, are doing through our Lutheran ladies here, and as long as uh, by December 13th you bring in your, your items, uh, we will see that Kutztown Manor receives them. We gather together. Brothers and sisters, and we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, please rise. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with his power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We join together now in singing hymn number 693.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God, according to your wisdom, the deep waters are opened up and clouds drop gentle moisture. We praise you for the return of planting and harvest seasons, for the fertility of the soil, for the harvesting of the crops, and for all other blessings that you and your generosity pour out on all people. Give us a full understanding of your mercy that our lives may show respect and care for your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reign forever and ever, world without end. Amen. And now we join together in singing the canticle of praise. Our first reading this evening will be from Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper, 
and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Our second reading is from the Psalms. Sorry. <laughs> Our second lesson will be 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for great generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the rendering of this service not only supplies the wants of the saints, but also overflows in many thanksgivings to God. Under the test of this service, you will glorify God by your obedience in acknowledging the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you, because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he, met by, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, 
he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Would I like a little light? And there is, and it was good. I'd like to, uh, before I begin, I'd like just to simply introduce myself. My name is Marty Milne. Again, as uh, Pastor Sassaman said, uh, I am the newly called pastor at Christ Mertz Lutheran Church in Dryville. Uh, I came there on September 20th, so truly I am still uh, mopping up the, the moisture behind my ears there, still a little wet behind the ears. Uh, hard to believe that uh, in the midst of what seems to be a very traumatic time within our world, uh, new life and new hope and new possibilities uh, began. I came from uh, just over the mountain on the other side. I was in Zionsville for almost 15 years at uh, Zions Lutheran Church in Old Zionsville. And uh, I live in Albertus. So it was, I think it was something like 6.2 miles to, uh, to Zions, and it's 9.8 miles to uh, Dryville. It's a wash. So it was a great fit, great match. Uh, I could say within the last 10 weeks, it's felt good. So, um, and as Pastor Sassaman was so kind and benevolent, uh, he said, you're the new guy. You should preach. They should get to know who you are. So to uh, Pastor Sassaman, I say thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Rodgers and Hammerstein will have some editorial editions for 2020. A four-pack of toilet paper, a roll of paper towels, Zoom, sourdough starter, Netflix, uh, but not Tiger King, frontline workers and first responders. These are a few of my favorite things. And to Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, we might add wildfires, COVID-19, PPE, isolation, quarantine, political polarization, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, white supremacy, 29 named hurricanes. Perhaps it's all been burning since the world's been turning, but this year seems to have been burning and turning hotter and faster than normal. John Oliver, political satirist and comedian, as part of the 2020 season ender for his HBO show Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, offered a, an emphatic expletive and then proceeded to blow up a massive 94 foot wide by 40 feet tall by 8 feet deep 2020 sign. So while prepping the sermon for this evening and searching for how one might describe 2020, I came across this short little dialogue entitled History Class in the Year 2050. And that class was 2019. Next lesson is on 2021. And get ready, because it's a huge one. Uh, wait, Miss Crabtree, why aren't you telling us about 2020? Don't ever speak that year. Ever. 
Well, why not? Well, think of a world ravaged and infected with a deadly virus, all alone in social isolation, then pile on top of that all the blood and gore from a good George Romero film, and then multiply the whole thing with social unrest, economic crisis, political polarization, threats of war, as well as all the evil you can ever imagine. And there's your answer. You'll get PTSD if I tell you any more about that forbidden year. Forbidden, verboten. We turn 2020 into the Voldemort of history, the year that must not be named. For many, tomorrow will seem a bit less. And I dare suggest that we, when gathered at whatever Thanksgiving dinner your family will have, when asked, so what are you grateful for? Many just will simply shrug their shoulders. How do you give thanks in the face of isolation, political unrest, social injustice, prejudice, economic disparity? And frankly, none of that really matters because for many, they can't hug their grandkids. How are we to feel a sense of gratitude when we can't seem to muster it? And as one who wears the the white alb, the stole, the black shirt, and the white collar, dare I be presumptuous and say, constant contact with God? Intentional, deliberate contact with God. Our natural inclination is to ride the wave of despair and misery and slowly drown spiritually. I'm sure the ten lepers from this evening's gospel understand this. Isolated due to a deadly disease. Unable to be employed. Disassociated with friends and family. They couldn't participate in worship. Ostracized by society. So when opportunity comes for this to be different, what happens? Ten were healed. Ten, no doubt, were surprised at this discovery. Perhaps some were overjoyed. Perhaps some celebrated. Perhaps some actually ran off to tell their family and friends. Hug their grandchildren. Perhaps a few even took it for granted. Who knows? What we do know is that one not only felt thankful, but decided to actually give voice to that particular emotion. To express gratitude, excuse me, to express the gratitude to Jesus and to God. Gratitude is indeed a response to the blessings of life, but it is also a choice to see those blessings, name them, and express our gratitude in word and deed. A defiance of the powers of sin and death may be digging into our relationship with Christ, that in the face of all the forces of sin, death, and the devil, we profess our thanks to God in the face of our fears, our frustrations, our anxiety, and our troubled hearts. I gave up golf years ago. I could not consistently hit the ball in such a way that I would go where it would go where I wanted it to go. I'd swing using all the techniques I had been told, shown, and yet one out of every thousand swings, the ball would go where I wanted it to go. So I said, the heck with golf, I gave up. That's on me. I didn't give it enough time, I think. I didn't give myself an opportunity to acquire what many golfers or sports Uh, enthusiasts would call muscle memory. 
Gratitude is spiritual muscle memory. That spiritual muscle needs worked out or it becomes like doing push-ups. For, for some, push-ups are second nature. It's easy for them. Well, for me, uh, getting three would be a struggle. Lazy, sluggish, slothful, that's me. My middle's grown. Likely so has my A1C, my blood pressure, and the like. And yet it could be so different. This particular year, maybe most of the time, gratitude is often used as a trite spiritual muscle that never really gets exercised. What a powerful witness it would be for those who know the saving grace of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ to say, in the face of things that are out of our control, to simply say, I'm grateful. In the words of David Lose, expressing gratitude does not simply express our thanksgiving, but actually gives voice to a countercultural witness that has the power to shape those around us push back the tide of resentment and complaint that ails us and make room for a fresh appreciation for God's renewing saving grace. Gratitude is not a command, nor is it a demand. Not, be grateful for crying out loud. It's not like that. It's our human attempt at exercising our faith. Yet for some, they are truly overwhelmed by so much grief and pain, they simply can't muster it. So our expression of gratitude is crying with them, loving them, lifting them up, being with them, doing what we can, however we can, for as long as we can, until their joy returns. Ten lepers were all healed. All were overjoyed, all surprised, all excited. One stopped to express gratitude. All were healed. One was made well or whole. This faith journey we are on is not about us being bad people trying to be good. It's about us being broken and seeking to be made whole. And regardless of whether we have a few of our favorite things or we are suffering from the burning, turning world, we need flesh and blood reminders and need to be flesh and blood reminders of gratitude. So let us simply not be those who respond to emotional stimuli to be grateful but rather exercise spiritual muscle memory in response to the God that we give thanks to who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Amen.
Let us express our faith as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Father, we come before you on this Thanksgiving Eve to express our thanks for our many blessings. And we know, Lord, in our hearts that we should be thanking you 365 days a year, not just this one. Because when we look at our lives, in spite of problems that we may have, we are truly blessed so much more than the majority of people in this world. And Lord, we ask that you be with those who suffer this day. Bring them some of your peace and mercy and give them provision for their needs. We ask this, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our world is in turmoil right now. And there are those who step to the forefront to aid us, keep us safe. We ask your blessing on our medical personnel, our police officers, firefighters, our EMS personnel, and all those who put their lives at risk to keep us safe. Keep them safe, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, there are those who are quarantined and isolated and feel alone and afraid. Please bring your peace upon them, for truly they are in need this day. We ask, Lord, that you use us in any way we can to bring them peace and comfort and reassure them of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Father, help us to show our gratitude in thought, word, and deed, because many times we do not come through as followers of Jesus. We fail to be that leper that goes back and give you thanks. Forgive us, Father, and Lord, in your mercy. And finally, Father, for all our sins, whether in thought, word, and deed, and things we've done and things we have not done, we ask, Lord, for your forgiveness. And Lord, in your mercy. May the peace of Christ be with you. Offering, uh, but that too has been um, a little different during this pandemic. Uh, the offering basket is in the back of the church. If you have um, uh, placed your offering in there, great. If not, you can do so as you depart. Uh, what, what we have been asking is that we take this time to uh, meditate during the offertory uh, about the ways in which we can give our time, our talents, and our treasure to the ministries not only of our uh, respective congregations, but to ministries of all kinds uh, throughout the world. Uh, again, our offering this evening will be going to the Brandywine Food Pantry and our continued thoughts and prayers uh, with them as well. Let us meditate now and listen to the offertory.
Please rise and join with us in the doxology. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity water upon the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, for your word of life, O God give you thanks and praise. Send your tr spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, and increase our hope. Deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. We pray together the words that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Now this is where we have our annual um, feast after Thanksgiving Eve services. But this year it's obviously going to be more of a pretend feast. Um, obviously we're not going to be able to stay and, and really fellowship the way we, we want to. Um, but please be thinking about one another as we depart. And we do depart, nonetheless, the same as we always do, in the peace of God, to love and to serve the Lord, and to love and to serve one another. Thanks, Thanks be God. unto God.